Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I shall get on with it. Uh, my coffee from SIUC. I did actually think I was on later, but... Um, so I'm going to be talking a bit about integrating uh, agri-tech into text or membership <coughs> services, but um, really I'm going to kind of touch on some of the things that are emerging that will affect the, the sheep industry and how the society can uh, adapt and adopt those, uh, uh, those emerging technologies. So I was thinking about this when I wrote it, that uh, I've worked with the Textile Society uh, for about 30 years now, uh, and I've seen the society develop. And, uh, and uh, over that time, I've seen that the Textile Society have been very keen to deploy new technology. They've always been uh, at the forefront, and uh, I worked with them on computer, computerised registration, a Windows database for their office. Uh, found, they were founding members in Basco and the first society to genotype sheep. So they have a, a good track record of, a, of adopting these the emerging technologies. Um, <clears throat> so how will these technologies be deployed and what impact will they have? The, the government uh, used the term disruptive technologies in a lot of their innovation funding. And the idea is that the new uh, developing technologies are designed to disrupt. Okay? Their, their uh, impact is to shake up things that already exist and uh, make us think differently about how we do it. And there are lots of disruptive things that have occurred in the last few years, and their disruption is kind of not always positive, or in the short term not positive. And I think uh, a good example there is Amazon. Um, uh, I ordered a, a, an angle grinder last Sunday at 8 o'clock in the evening, and it turned up at work before I did on Monday morning. Okay, so... Uh, an excellent service uh, and one of those things that, that I was amazed by but of course the impact of Amazon is that we're seeing high street retailers drop uh, regularly and the, the most recent ones were the House of Fraser but uh, British Home Stores and, and a whole pile of others beforehand so emerging technologies had benefits and there are always consequences um, I think one of the things that uh, is interesting um, is Uber, and actually it become, I think it's turned into a noun now. You, can, you have become uh, Ubered. So uh, clearly what we don't need is the textual society or the textual breed to become Ubered. Um, and it's used that because the, the black the cabs in London were, were Ubered. Um, they thought they had a 150-year-old business that was all sealed, signed, and uh, protected from the outside world, and, and Uber shook it apart. Um, Another one is Google. Uh, Google are now doing genomic predictions. Okay, so that's disruptive for us engaged in genetic evaluations as well. Uh, they're using deep learning and machine learning to do uh, genomic predictions. And uh, 23andMe, that's a good example there of disruption. Uh, the Golden Gate killer was identified through his relatives. Uh, I think he's probably a bit annoyed at them, but his relatives uh, got genotyped. Uh, and he got uh, identified through his relatives' genotypes. So, lots of disruptions from the new technologies. Oh, not know of that one. There. Yeah. So, what does genomics do? It overcomes blockages, some very important blockages. Um, it allows widespread use of nucleus recording, so so-called phenotype farms uh, and uh, genomic predictions. It allows us to do things in small groups of animals, and then disseminate those benefits through genomic predictions. Uh, it increases the possibility of difficult traits, and we've heard that a number of times this morning. So, how will these agritech development impact, or brackets, disrupt uh, breed societies? Well, we've already heard mentioned this morning about genomic um, uh, parentage checking and discovery, but also creating opportunities for others to get into the sheep breeding world, and uh, breeding companies are a good example. Um, uh, I think market, uh, no, it was uh, Tim showed the rise of Genus's share price, uh, Genus World's biggest breeding company. I wonder if they're interested in sheep breeding. Integrated supply chains, uh, they are an opportunity and a threat, and blockchain uh, is one of those emerging technologies that making integrated uh, supply chains a, a real possibility. Uh, automated phenotype collection and we saw a few of those this morning, uh, sensors, cameras, and machine learning. And I'll give you some examples of that. Um, the one at the bottom there is surrogate sires. Uh, I think somebody this morning mentioned gene editing. It's not specifically a gene editing technology, 
Uh, but uh, you can gene edit uh, males to be sterile and you can inject their testicles with spermatogenic stem cells and they will then carry sperm from the elite animal. So you imagine a scenario where you could disseminate thousands of males that carry sperm cells from the elite sires. That's a huge opportunity for sheep breeders, but also a very big threat. Uh, and that technology is currently being developed for pigs. It's actually, there are actually pigs that carry um, spermatogenic stem cells from other pigs. Okay? So it's not, you know, it's not a long way away. These are real technologies that, that will impact. Um, <clears throat> I'll put that slide in. I can't remember why, but I think it was that uh, these specialist sheep uh, products, uh, they are an opportunity, but they're also a threat. If someone else can produce them faster than you can, they're a threat. Um, if you can produce them to prevent imports from New Zealand, they're an opportunity. So uh, both a threat and an opportunity. Um, I mentioned automated phenotyping, um, and this is an example. Uh, we work with a, a goat uh, breeding company, and they're interested in um, phenotyping other scores, and, and that's what the pictures look like. And of course, what we're interested in is that bit there, and using machine learning, we can identify that piece of the picture. We can identify the little square in the middle, um, because it's got yellow in it. That then becomes the picture that the machine learning looks at, and the little red square there contains the number 73, and the machine learning can be trained to identify that number with 100% accuracy. So we can now score, and in this case, 120,000 images for other score in, in a matter of moments. Um, and so these are the technologies that are developing that will produce new phenotypes to enable breeders to breed better sheep and goats in this case um, in the future. And this is real. This is not a, a potential technology. This is actually being developed right now as we speak. Um, government support payments. It's not really agri-tech, but we heard about it this morning, and, and they will change. I put that one there. They, they might go up. <laughs> Who knows? But we need to prepare anyway. And, of course, those changes combined with the emerging technologies could, could actually end up with it being a, a perfect storm. Loads of change all at the same time. Um, and, of course, earlier this week there was a report saying that there's a pressure to reduce livestock numbers. And, of course, the role that we often give sheep, which is to um, graze in areas that are very difficult to farm normally, and they turn those very less favoured areas into viable product, the same thing could be said of trees, and it was said earlier in this report. So one of your competitors now are trees. So how can textual society respond? Well, I think one of the things that emerged in a few of the talks this morning was the role of EBVs. And for me, not necessarily in the right order. But genetic improvement works, and there is no discussion about that. There is no discussion about whether or not you select animals to produce more, they will produce more. If you select them to be bigger, they will be bigger, longer, longer, more wool. If they, you want their horns to go backwards instead of forwards, you can select them to do all of those things. Genetics works, end of discussion. So the question then is how do you get higher penetration rates um, to, to get increased uptake? And of course there's been a lot of discussion. Uh, I think in Wales they have a, an incentive programme and perhaps we might need to think about disincentives, uh, the use of poor animals. And this is a role that supermarkets play and they do play this role that, that they will start to exert pressure that says we will no longer take lamb or meat from animals that have been bred in a certain way. Um, one of the things that I think is an opportunity for the textual society is phenotype farms, and I know we've already been working in this area. And these are farms that can uh, be under sort of strict control that can produce phenotypes. I think Natalie referred to phenotypes. She didn't quite say hashtag phenotype is king, but I know she meant it. Um, <laughs> And, and that's where the phenotypes can come from. These can be used to train your population and then the genomic evaluation can be used to, to uh, drive genetic improvement in the direction that your society wants to do it. How can you respond? You can focus on technical excellence of breeders. We heard a lot this, this morning about marketing and I, I rather 
uh, flippantly put up the question, can we market our way out of technical inefficiency? The answer to that is no. No <coughs> amount of marketing will get you out of a position if you're producing in inefficient products. So technical efficiency, technical excellence is the key to being able to produce a lamb efficiently and effectively. You want to make sure the members want to belong to the Texel Sheep Society. So the, the Sheep Society itself, the body that, that promotes and drives the breed, needs to keep up with everything that's going on. Um, a lot of the developments that have been voiced, as it were, this morning, some of them are short-term. So automated phenotype gathering is happening now. Gene editing is a bit longer term. But your society needs to be able to identify the threats and the opportunities in good time and put in place the, uh, the developments that allow you to exploit them. Don't become complacent. Uh, complacent. It's very easy, and I've seen it with lots of other breed societies, that when you become number one... Uh, you've achieved your goal, you don't have to do anything else. And a bit like the hippopotamus, you just need to run faster than the, the previous breed society. But don't forget, those breed societies will be waking up very soon and they will start trotting. And you don't want to be in front of that hippopotamus for sure. Uh, we've heard it again about making sure the product meets market requirements. Uh, and I think, for me, the market are consumers. Now, clearly, there are a number of steps between a breeder and the consumers, being the person who buys the ram and the person who buys the ram's offspring and so on and so on. Uh, but clearly, people only buy rams because they want to produce meat. And so consumers buy meat. So your market, your consumers, are people who eat meat. And you want to make sure that your sheep uh, meet that requirement. Now, virtually every dairy cow in the country is a Holstein black and white. Now, wouldn't it be great if virtually every sheep in the country was a Texel? And I think that's what the objective ought to be. Um, so, coming now to the foreground and the final uh, the slide, I think. Um, I've worked... So, foreground now. This is not background anymore. This is foreground. I've worked for 30 years with the society, developed, blah, blah, blah. And now I think what the things that happens now is that they need to accelerate that. Uh, the society's done really, really well. Uh, now you need to accelerate to keep up. Uh, the management and the council of the society have to lead, uh, but they require the, the membership uh, to, to provide that remit for them to lead on their behalf. I said earlier, I don't understand how the weather is forecast, but I believe it. Uh, I think uh, you need to give the society um, the remit to lead, and the society needs to lead, because the future is upon us. It's coming pretty rapidly. That's it.